So in the past couple years in the mushroom cultivation space, you've seen people get away from monotubs, get away from Martha tents, and they're going into all-in-one bag grows or bag cultivation, in vitro, whatever you guys want to call it. Everybody's moving into that space because it's keeping costs low and it's making the operation just run a lot smoother. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys the proper way to get your bag set up for all-in-one bag growing. You guys are going to love this video. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers. You can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time here on Willie's World, welcome to the Trip Team family. TTF, that's what it's about, my familia. I love you guys. Thank you for all your love and support. If this is your first time here and you found some benefit in this video, then go down below, hit that subscribe button and the bell off to the side. It's the freest way to show your love and support. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. All my social media is right here. Now, if you guys want videos that I can't put up on YouTube, I mean, step-by-step -step stuff, extractions, synthesis, a private chat room, a marketplace, a private Reddit, one-on-one -on -one help from me with whatever you're doing, go check out my Patreon. It is the best place. It's uncensored. So you guys are going to get crazy, crazy videos over there. There's over 100 videos that can be seen over there that can't be seen anywhere else. And that's because we get into things that we can't put anywhere else if you guys catch my drift. What did he say? Also, Instagram and Twitter is right there. Now, if you don't see it up on the screen right here, it don't belong to me. There's a lot of fake accounts, people that pretend to be me to scam you. So guys, be very, very careful. These are my only accounts. If you don't see it right here, it don't belong to me. So make sure you guys are following a real person. All the links to my social media, the Patreon with the private chat, the library, all that will be in a pinned comment down below. So if you guys want to go check out any of that stuff, you can just click the links and I'll see you guys over there. So here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to keep it short, sweet, but super informative and straight to the point. So if you guys are into mushroom cultivation, I'm sure you guys have seen people growing in bags and you might be saying to yourself, well, ain't you cutting yourself short if you grow in a bag? Isn't it better to go into a monotub or in trays and put them into a tent? The fact of the matter is it all comes down to surface area. Surface area equals yield every single time. So as long as you have the same amount of surface area, you will get the same yield. It don't matter if you're growing in bags, tubs, BRF cakes, tents, it does not matter. As long as you have the same surface area, you will always get the same exact yield. Increase your surface area, increase your yield. It's as simple as that. As long as you're using the same exact genetic on all those methods, you will get the same exact yield as long as the surface area is the same. So now when you check out a lot of cultivators on Instagram or commercial grows, you're going to see people just with a ton of racks with bags. And the reason why people are doing that is because the bag is your fruiting environment. It keeps everything in one place. So there is no having to worry about humidity. There is no having to build out monotubs or clean out monotubs or anything like that. You grow in the bag. You harvest, you flush again, you harvest, you flush again as many times as you can flush it. You flush it, as soon as it gets contaminated or stops producing, you just toss it into the compost pile. The really cool thing is there's a lot of vendors now that sell biodegradable bags. So back in the day, I was really against this method because of the pollution it caused, all the plastic that was going to waste. But now you guys can buy biodegradable bags and they break down really, really fast and efficiently. So we're always finding better ways of doing things. And now bag growing is the way to go. Now, not all types of mushrooms are going to perform well in bags. Let's say Penelius, for example, they don't perform well in bags. So you still need to keep tents and stuff for those types of mushrooms. But for the majority of mushrooms, they will do perfectly fine in bags. Now, there's different ways you'll see people setting up their bags. And I've tested a bunch of different ways. And these are the best methods for setting up your bags to get the best results and keep the most stable environment for your fungi. Now, real quick, let's just talk about the stuff that I'm going to be using in this video. Now, just for you guys to know, 
You don't need everything I show right here. I'm gonna show a couple different methods and then you guys could choose which method works best for you. And I'll show you guys the method that I stick with. Now, depending on what I'm cultivating, my method of my bag setup might change a little bit because some mushrooms react differently to different environments. They need a little bit more of this or a little bit less of that. So I'm really familiar with my genetics and I suggest you guys do the same exact thing. Get familiar with the genetics you have in your library because then you'll know what they need to really thrive and then you can make the bags custom to that specific genetic. So with all that said, let's jump in from the table and let's talk about what we're gonna be using in this video. The first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need your colonized grains. Now, colonized grains, I have videos showing you how to make grain bags. I have videos showing you how to inoculate them and colonize them and all that stuff in the private library and I think even some here on YouTube. So if you guys wanna know how to make grain bags and all that stuff, just go to Patreon because it's all in the private library. This is a five pound bag of colonized grains. As you guys could see, it looks beautiful. It's nice, it's white, there's no metabolites, there's no discoloration. It's a very healthy bag of grain spawn. Now, if you guys don't wanna make your own grains, you don't wanna go through all that, you just wanna order whatever you need, you guys could go to companies like browntreasure.com, pooguard.com. You guys could order your grains, ship to the house, and then when you get them, they come ready to use. You guys just inoculate them with the spores of your choice and let them colonize. But if you guys wanna do everything from the ground up, I got the videos showing you how to do it. It's super easy. The next thing you're gonna need is your substrate. Now there's different types of substrate and depending on what type of mushroom you guys are cultivating, it might require a different substrate. But for this specific video, I'm gonna be using the Brown Treasure Willie's Blend. That's my blend. So I worked with this company in Puerto Rico. I actually don't make any money off of this substrate. A small portion of every sale goes towards a TTF scholarship that we're gonna be doing. So it's building up right now. As soon as we hit what we wanna hit, we're gonna be giving out our first scholarship. So if you guys wanna support an amazing company, get an amazing product, the same exact substrate that I use in all my grows, then you guys could go to browntreasure.com and get some Willie's Blend. It comes ready to use. So as soon as you guys get it, you could use it. They also sell a dry blend, which is a five gallon bucket of the mixture. And then you just add water and pasteurize yourself. So if you guys want to order it and have it stocked up, it will last forever. Same thing with the pre-pasteurized stuff. You could just put it in the freezer and freeze it. And then when you guys are ready to use it, you just pull it out 24 hours before you're going to use it. And it's still good. So this is a great product. There's tons of amazing ingredients in there and supplemental nutrients, microbes, all that good stuff. So if you guys want some of the best substrate in the world, browntreasure.com. The best part is you guys could use the code TTF when you guys go to check out. And that's gonna take 15 to 20% off your order, off the entire order. I'm not exactly sure how much, but use that code and you guys will save a good amount of money. Like I said, I don't make a single penny off the product. Just wanted to work and partner up with a great company that wants to do great things for the community. And I'm telling you their product is next level, trust me. The next thing you guys are gonna need is your bags that you're actually gonna be fruiting inside. Now the bags that I use are very, very specific. So I use a 10 inch bag. So it's 10 inches across and it's about 24 inches long. Now, if you guys wanna use a smaller bag, that's 100% perfectly fine, you can do that. But just remember, the more surface area, the more yield. So I like using a bigger bag so I can get more surface area. Now, the next thing you guys are gonna need is some of these plastic things right here. You guys might be saying, Willie, what are those plastic things? So do you guys remember doing book reports and stuff for school back in the day? You know those clear covers that would go over your book reports? Well, this is the thing that holds it together, just like this. So I like using these to keep my bags closed, but if you guys don't wanna use these or spend the extra money to buy these, then you guys could use paper clips or you guys could use an impulse sailor. I'm gonna show you all three different ways to do it and you guys can pick which one works best for you. Once you guys have everything together, we could start the process. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take our grain and we have to break it up. So nice and easy, just lay it down and start breaking up the grains. It's very important, you don't wanna to use too much force because you don't wanna squish the grains. If you crack the grains open, there's a chance it could get contaminated. So just try to be as easy as you can, but get all the grains loose and ready to spawn. 
Once you guys have your grains all broken up, now what you guys could do is you could open up your substrate. So I'm gonna open up my brown treasure substrate. It comes ready to use. There's nothing that you have to do except open it up and use it. Once you guys have your grains all set and you have your substrate open, now what you guys wanna do is open up one of your fruiting bags. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting two and a half pounds of grains to two and a half pounds of substrate. That's a one to one ratio. Now you'll hear some people say, well, I use a two to one, two part substrate to one part spawn. That's perfectly fine, but I never suggest going over that. Two to one is the max. If you guys try to go over that and do a three to one or a four to one or something like that, it's gonna reduce the colonization time greatly. So you're gonna have slower colonization time, which also increases the chance of contamination. So if you guys use a one to one, a two to one at max, you guys are gonna have the fastest possible colonization, which is gonna give you the highest chance of success. So I'm gonna be using two and a half pounds of grains and two and a half pounds of substrate. So I'm gonna open up my fruiting bag and I'm gonna put in two and a half pounds of grains to start it off. Now, I'm not weighing this out, I'm eyeballing it. I know each one of my bags, my substrate and my grains each weighs five pounds. So I'm gonna try to use exactly half in each bag. I'm gonna be doing two different bags for you guys. Now, if it's a little bit off, it's not gonna make a difference. It's not gonna be a big issue. Just try to get it as close as you guys could get it. Now, if you wanna use a two to one, then it's gonna be different. But if you guys are following a one to one like me, we're pretty much just splitting it down the middle and taking even parts and putting them into the fruiting bag. I'll start off by putting my grains in. And once my grains are in there, now I'll put my substrate. Once I have my grains and my substrate in the fruiting bag, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix everything up as good as I can mix it up. I wanna try to spread out those inoculation points into all different areas so that I get even colonization. If you guys don't mix it up, you guys will get uneven colonization, which means some parts will colonize before other parts and you'll be waiting on those parts that aren't colonized to colonize and it will just slow things down. So try to spread everything out and mix it up the best you can. Once you guys have everything all mixed up, now all we need to do is we need to close up our bag. So like I said, I'm gonna be using the book binder things. So pretty much you're just gonna cut it in half and it's gonna make two and then you're gonna use that to close up your bag. So you're gonna roll up the bag and then you're gonna take your book binder and you're just gonna slide it over the bag and it's gonna keep your bag closed. Now, if you guys don't have that, you guys could use paper clips. Paper clips are a great option. You could just put one paper clip or two paper clips, one on each end, and that will also keep the bag closed. If you guys don't have that, you guys could use an impulse sailor. So you could seal your bag back up with the impulse sailor. An impulse sailor, some of you guys might have it, some of you guys might not. But if you do, you can also sell up your bag. And then when it comes time to fruit, I'll show you guys what to do with that. So pick which way you want to close up your bag. Once you've closed up the bag, now what you guys could do is you could put it off to the side and it needs to colonize. It's going to colonize for about seven to 10 days. It really depends on the genetics and it really depends on what your ratio of spawn to substrate was. But generally, it's going to take about seven to 10 days for it to fully colonize. Once it's fully colonized, we'll come back and that's gonna be video part two. Now, colonization conditions can range greatly. It depends on what you're cultivating. So if you guys are cultivating, let's say a cube or a pan or something like that, then you would wanna be anywhere between 68 and 74 degrees. That's where I like to colonize at, right in that range right there. I don't like it too high, too low. 68 to 74 is where I colonize at. Now, if you guys are growing other types of mushrooms, you're gonna have to figure out what their colonizing conditions are, what the temperatures are, and their requirements. But for this specific bags that we're doing right here, probably the same type of bags that you guys are doing at home, it's gonna be between 68 degrees Fahrenheit and 74 degrees Fahrenheit for seven to 10 days or until completely white. Now, light really doesn't matter at this point in time, so you guys don't have to have it on a light schedule. If it gets ambient light throughout the day, that's perfectly fine, but you don't want it on a 12 to 12 light cycle like we will during fruiting. So for now, just put it off into colonizing conditions, 68 to 74 with ambient light, 
and let it colonize. Don't disturb it. Don't mess with it. Just let it colonize. After it's fully colonized, we'll come back and that's going to be part two. And we're going to start fruiting out our bags. And I'm going to show you guys a few different methods to fruiting out these bags. And I'm also going to talk about fruiting conditions when we're growing inside bags, because it's slightly different than if you guys were growing in a monotub or a tank. We're doing in vitro, all in one bag growing. So things are going to change up just a little bit, but it might be a little bit easier for most of you guys at home. So make sure you guys stay tuned for part two because in part two, we're gonna fruit out these amazing gourmet mushrooms and we're gonna see what we get. We're also gonna talk about fruiting conditions and what you guys could do to increase the odds of getting the best yield possible. Thank you guys for all your love and support. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.